Welcome back everybody. Back to Terraria. This is Papa Meerkat. And in this episode, we're going to walk the surface and go find an ocean. Since I got a little bit of armor going. We did, uh, last episode we built the golden pickaxe. We, oop, wrong button. Well, I need to clear up this inventory, don't I? We got the magic mirror. We made a fishing rod. I got 10 worms, 15 fireflies. Uh, before that, we got the enchanted sword. Made a full set of armor. I made this string because I wanted to make a yo-yo. I might do that before we leave. I need to put away this stuff. My inventory is just full. Uh, quick stack. Let's see if I can put some of this stuff away. There we go. Antline mandibles. I think that is for the sand gun or something similar to that. Let's see what this is. Yeah, there's the uh, sand gun. It's 30 range damage, but it uses sand. I don't have topaz, and these are expensive, like 50 gold or something. Man, I need some extra chests, guys. Look at this. This is just crazy. So before we head out, I need to make... some kind of chest holding room yeah last episode I said I was gonna go off camera do some bait hunting maybe some more mining I didn't get to do that yesterday because for some reason if you guys want to elaborate on uh, in the comments why Elgato seems to hate Traria. And what I mean by that is that when I try to record, Elgato for some reason wants to glitch out. That's my capture card. And when it does that, I have to restart this at least maybe once or up to three times just so you can get started recording. And then after I'm done with my file, when I'm done with recording, now I hit stop, it has to import the video and process the video onto my hard drive. And when it does that, it... Okay, to make this clear is that I record Borderlands at the beginning of the week, right? And because I record Borderlands, I do about the same amount of time. Let's say about 40 or 50 minutes per episode, depending on. And when I do... Some weird stuff happens with Elgato. It tends to triple or double the file size. Like a average video size for Borderlands is about 8 to 9 gigabytes for a 40 to 50 minute recording. But for some reason, Terraria, when it makes a file size, it takes about an hour and a half to import the video over. Or process the video and it is the last this last yesterday's episode which was 53 minutes I think it was almost 25 gigabytes and I don't even know why so if you guys want to elaborate why it's doing that I would appreciate it because I don't understand it myself so that would be real helpful if somebody would do that for me Maybe I can fix it and we can get this sorted and it'll be a lot easier for me to record these videos. Then I'll probably have more of them up. I don't know. I seem to not have enough videos up at all times. Only because... Elgato team, it seems to hate uh, Traria. Alright. Let's put some of this stuff away so we can go on an adventure. Let's go in this chest, let's put the chains back. I'll put this in there. I don't know if I want to use this, but you can keep it as a material. It becomes a fire boomerang later on. When you go to the hail layer. I need to sort this. I might do this off camera. Like I said before, I'm, I need to, off camera, make me a storage room. And I'm going to put the storage room here. Probably build this out and get rid of the bed and put it somewhere else. 
build this up so I can have more NPCs and build a uh, whole storage unit down here that's going to be organized. <clears throat> but I definitely need some more bait if I'm going to go fishing, that is for sure. So it takes a lot to do it. Alright, I need to grab me a chest or two. If I got any. I know I got some gold chests. Where did they go? Are they in here? Yes. Let's get these wooden ones here. Just want to put some of these down so I can at least organize my inventory somewhat. Let's put two of these down. To pull an individual item out of there, you right click the item in a chest so you can get one at a time so you're not grabbing a whole stack all at once if you don't need the whole stack. Alright. Yeah, off camera, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my house up build my storage room, sort out my inventories, because I like having everything individualized, like accessories in one chest, weapons, armor, ores, potion ingredients, potions, you know, stuff such as that. And I'll do that off camera so I don't bore everybody. But my inventory is so full, let's go ahead and just dump everything off real quick. There we go, make sure I didn't dump anything I need. I don't want to get rid of stuff I need. Let's go ahead and favorite this. And let's put my worms up here. I'm going to switch places here. Because I always keep this stuff on the edge here. And when you get like certain accessories that I don't equip. But if they're in your inventory still work. Like the clock and whatnot. I'll keep them over there. And let's build this yo-yo. Since I think I can. Alright. Yo-yo time. Or not. Do I need string? Yeah, it looks like I might need string. Where's all my webs? I don't think I put any more webs in there. Nope. I thought I had a lot more webs than that. They in here? Oh yeah, I got a lot more. For sure. Let's go ahead and carry these around. I might use these. They're okay for some range damage. I do have this though, so that's great. How many potions? I got 29 potions. Alright. <clears throat> Let's see if I can build this. There we go. One wooden yo-yo. It's not the best, but it's a start. A ruthless. I get less knockback, but I get extra damage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that up here and keep this down here. So I think if you're looking at a tree, you can auto-go to your axe without having to have it in your hotbar yeah see if I hold shift when I'm looking at it or like pointing at a tree it automatically choose it like pickaxe down here axe here all right I'm gonna head this way since we already started going this way like uh, a couple episodes ago why we stopped is because the I had no movement accessories so I couldn't pass the uh, sandstorm in the in the desert so if there's no sandstorm, we can just go on. We might find some extra chests and stuff too. Past that desert. There might be a pyramid. That would be nice if I get a sandstorm in a bottle. I think sandstorm in a bottle is better than a cloud in a bottle. You get a little bit more height. Because you get double jump and then you get a little boost after the double jump if you hold down the space bar. Remember I told you that this sword... Is used as like a light source in dark places. It works. And I noticed when I uh, edited my last video. Was that the video came out darker than usual. So I'll see if I can do any post lighting up. Brightening. Because it was pretty dark. Alright let's see what we can find guys. We've explored most of this surface on this side. That's where we got the enchanted sword. We want to go after that point and see what we can find. On the adventure to the ocean. Yeah, the ocean is very important to me because a uh, specific item that kind of is game breaking at the beginning. But not really. It, it's really handy. And it saves you some materials later on. Until you hit hard mode, of course. Two hits on that guy. Oh, strange plant. I collect every one of those I can. Haha. <laughs> Got him. 
I was like, in mid jump, I hit him with that. It was awesome. And since we built the hook shot thing, grappling hook, really, we can save our butts because these are deep. And if you don't, if you fall, you're pretty much dead. Not unless you have a, another item that negates all fall damage, which is up in the sky. Right now, we're not doing sky islands. Yeah, Skylines can have some cool stuff on them. Like you can get, um, I need that actually. See this little plant right here? It's kind of hard to see. It's a death weed. You need those to make worm bait. For a boss fight later on. Always aim ahead of your target. Oh, got him. Good shot, bro. Good shot. Get away from me, you ugly things. You can drop the armor. Those things have a small chance. That's where we got the enchanted sword, right there. Let's put a light down there. There we go. And we found another one of those up ahead before the desert. That was a dud. Another strange plant. I like the dyes in this game. Not all of them. Some of them don't look that great, but some of them are awesome looking. And they're animated too. So you turn those into the dye trader and get some cool stuff. So you don't always just look like, as you can see, my character just looks all gray and funky. But if you put dyes on that armor, it'll look pretty, pretty BA. Alright. We're almost to the desert. I think that was well look how flat here look how flat this is and we're catching that guy there we go grasshopper get away from me eyeball well I need that lens though you use these lenses for um, to make the boss summon for Cthulhu it's probably a bad idea to run around here at night but we got lucky last episode when I started it up. It was starting out daytime. Wasn't so lucky this time. Oh, here's the desert I couldn't pass. I haven't seen a pyramid in forever. I know they still exist. They just they don't spawn anymore in the worlds. It's like out of ten worlds made, any size. You may get one, if you're lucky. Hey, your target. Bam. Another lens. Nice. We made it this far. That wasn't the desert I got stuck on, huh? All these zombies. Oh, we don't say the ZZ word. We say walkers or something else, right? Zombies kind of cliche you know oh right, look this is where that dud was that I found oh I thought they were just gonna fall on down why I feel more brave is that this sword does some good damage for the early game so I'm not too scared of the zombies or demon eyes there's the desert I couldn't pass because I couldn't jump up here so let's see what we find in here. This right here, you see this flower on top of this cactus? That's a dye, or a dye ingredient. So if you want to pick those up, let's put this down. And we found the dungeon, guys. Are we lucky? Let's see if we're lucky. Because you'll have these books up here. And sometimes they'll, very small chance they'll spawn. No, we're not lucky. But there's a magic spell you can get from these books. And uh, it's called Water Bolt or uh, something similar to that effect. But yeah, we weren't lucky with that one. If you want to get those off, you don't have to use a, like a potions you see on these uh, platforms. You don't have to use uh, a pickaxe to break them. You just right click them and they'll pop right off there. And turn on this light. 
if you had a machine or something that will show you, you'll see that wires go up here and come up here. I know books are used to make spells later on, and when you kill a certain amount of enemies, you get banners, and banners are used to give you buffs. You can walk somewhat down here, but you have to be real careful because at a certain point, the dungeon guardian will come out and he one shots you, so it's kind of scary to do this. I might, I don't really need to do this because I'm trying to go to the ocean. I'm looking for a water bolt spell. Which I don't see any. I think the book looks very specific on the shelf. We're just going to leave that place alone for a while. This right here is like when I bought this game a long time ago. They just Im implemented the dungeon and they were about to implement Skeletron. Or it could have been the other way around. That's a deep hole. That's what she said, right? Alright. Oh. Yeah, you don't want to mess with me, man. I got an enchanted sword. You, man. Yeah, since I got this armor, it's not the best armor in the game. Of course not. You know, you got a lot of stuff later on. But, at least I got something. And these plants that you see, that was a water leaf, makes potions later on. Me and my brother was playing this years ago, and it was so hard to get uh, the water leaf seeds so you can plant them yourself. Because there was no such thing as rain in the game. And because there was no rain, it was very difficult to get the seeds. Because when it rains, you get the seeds. I know some of this coral is useful for stuff. Well, we made it to the ocean. Look, we got the fisherman guy, which I can't do anything with because I don't have a room made for him. So what I'll usually do is I'll dig down, build me a little fishing shack, if you will. Ooh, a shark. Very dangerous, but they give you a chance of getting a diving helmet, which is very useful. Go down, man. Give me a diving helmet. No, nope. didn't give me nothing. A uh, shark fin. I'll jump. Take out the jellyfish. See these glow sticks I was talking about last episode? Alright, so what I do is I'll build up a structure of some sort. Whoop. Put that in the wrong spot. And the structure will basically protect me from the creatures. So what I do is I build it out a bit, go down, now I have a lip here for a reason. Oh gosh, no, he's going to take me down, he's going to take me down. Crab, crab people, crab. These uh, ocean creatures are kind of scary. Yeah, get out of the water, dude. You need, need to not be in the water. If you stand in the water, you have all these uh, sharks and all these creatures will always come after you. So I always do that to, to attract the sharks. Let's put on some, some torches here. Alright. I don't have a huge amount of bait, but let's start fishing and see if we can get our, our catch. Nope. Nope. Well, since I'm in water, it won't let me... Alright, let's put up... Wow, that was beautiful. There we go. In the water, it kind of glitches out with the fishing pole. Well, I'm all, you just cast a little bit. I'm not going to f spend this whole episode fishing. I just want to just do it a little bit and see if we get lucky. But I have a, an ocean made for this... Uh, thing I'm going to do. Those are the crates. And those are awesome. And don't open your crates. If you get crate, if you want to go fishing in this game, keep all the crates. Don't open any of them. Why? It's because when you hit hard mode after beating the wall of flesh then you can get hard mode ores out of those crates. Which is very handy early on. Because 
to get hard mode ores, you have to pretty much uh, distract it there for a second, but you pretty much have to destroy the demon altars with a thing called a pawn hammer. If you try to hit one of those uh, demon altars with a normal hammer, you'll get hurt. It'll pretty much one kill, uh, one hit you, or it's going to do massive damage. So don't even try it, not unless you want to die. So, oh man, I need to build that higher, don't I? The slimes are just going right over it. That would be awesome if I get this particular item I've been talking about for the last three episodes. Early on. When you fish, you have bait. See, I had ten worms earlier. It shows total of bait in your on the fishing rod itself. And it does take your bait when you fish, but it's not a always thing. Sometimes a worm can last up to five casts, and then it'll go away, or it can run out the first cast. For sure, I'm going to go, when I'm off camera, I'm going to try to fish for a while and catch this particular item. You can only catch it from the, the ocean. And I'll show you the item in the next episode if I catch it. We'll do a couple more casts and probably head back so we can go the other way and see what's on that side. We found the dungeon already. Well, I'm getting a lot of wooden crates. That's awesome. Oh, I got that. <laughs> There's one of the items. It's not the item, but it's a swordfish. And it works like a spear. And it's a pretty fast swing, too. It's actually not too bad. It's a good alternative if you don't have anything else. So this one's good. Not the best, but it's good. So if you catch that... It's okay to use that. There's certain weapons in this game that are not good. Like the copper short sword that you start with. Not good. Alright, I'm going to do five more casts. And then we'll head on. So we'll see if I can go underground again and do a little bit of spelunking. But if I can catch this item on camera, that would be awesome for you guys. That's three. Four. Uh, one more. Come on, give me the item. You could do it. Oh, well. Let's head on. Well, I'll do that off camera, and when I catch this item, I'll show you guys the item in the next episode. Let's hope I do. Or I'll make sure I do, actually. <clears throat> I'm not going to show, probably I'm not going to show me actually catching the item. But I'll show you the item in the next episode. Because I will play this today off camera for a bit, so I can do so for you guys I'm gonna try to save most of this stuff for you for on cameras whatnot but who wants to sit me a, you know see a whole episode of me sitting there fishing you know it's probably one of the boring most boring things in the game to do all right let's just head on and go the other way I might save the other way for later We'll just go on the ground and get some more stuff. Who doesn't like more stuff? See, the, the grappling hook saves you. If you're falling, just point your mouse where you want the grappling hook to go and save your save your butt. So you don't fall and get fall damage or die or something. So yeah, the it's E key. When you push E, it'll launch the grappling hook. And it'll always launch where you're mouse pointer is so when you are falling and if you got a quick mind on you just go ahead and like aim that at a wall or something and boom you, you're good Dang, I'm getting stuck on the roof there if you notice this golden pickaxe it's so much faster this next pickaxe though I think it's faster than the golden one and it's the thing from the ocean that I've been after this whole time. Let's go up here. To go through a hole, like straight up and down, it's two blocks wide. 
it'll tell you that's how much space it requires for your character to go through. Three blocks high, two blocks wide. So always keep that in mind when you're building structures or making a elevator, which we'll be doing in one episode. Ah, oh, the elevator. Classic Terraria. Wow, that was awesome. That was a long shot hit on that slime. That led to a dead end, I do believe. And if you want bait, like I said earlier, this stuff on the surface has a chance of dropping worms, just like that. That's one way to get bait. And if it rains, you'll have worms that'll spawn on the surface straight up. So you don't have to dig them up. And worms is a good bait at the start. They, they have a better fishing chance or catch chance if you look at a worm. See, the, uh, it's at 20% bait power. That means how often you catch stuff or luck. And this one is 25, so it is really good. And if you had extra stars that you're not using for mana, then you can use those stars with worms to make an enchanted worm. Enchanted worms are really good, but the amount of stars it requires to make them, it, it's a bit expensive, especially early game. Because later on, when you got all your stars here, then you don't have to worry about it. You can just save up all your fallen stars. You can use them for worms or make potions out of them. Or even use them as ammo because there's a gun later on called the Star Cannon that allows you to shoot fallen stars. Kind of want to go down to these places because they might have some good stuff, but these places can be dangerous. But you don't want to go down these places yet until you have a grappling hook because it's dangerous. Put some torches down so we can actually see something. I can't break this, can it? No, you need a shadow pick to break this ebon stone. Oh, yep, fall damage right there. Alright. See how well this thing works? There's other, uh, grappling hooks later on that is like a lot better like one of my favorites is called the uh it's from the jungle you collect up spores and from the man eaters which is a man eating plant that you get these things called uh, binds then you put those together to make the ivy rope or the uh yeah i think it's called the ivy rope and it has three like how you see how this thing has the one chain well, the Ivy Whip, that's what it's called, will have three. Oh, I got no fall damage. It's very dangerous for me to do this, but I've played this game many a times that I'm pretty confident in coming down here. I think the gold can pick, yeah, Demonite Ore, that's it. The gold pick can get the Demonite. These are Shadow Orbs. You need to be able to break through this stuff, which if you, as a early tip, if you're ready to fight the boss down in here, you can use bombs, the round gray bombs or sticky bombs, which you use uh, bombs with uh, the gel from the slimes, this stuff here. You can use bombs to break through this early because you need the shadow pick or better to break this ebon stone. You can't do it with this, the early picks. So... If you are ready to fight the boss down here, an early tip for you is use bombs to get through the ebon stone. And then you can make it down inside. Oh man. The devourer. Got him. Worm teeth. That's a big big worm. Not as big as the uh, boss worm though. The boss worm is like massive. I, I, I really seriously need double jump all right we'll just use the magic mirror the best kind of jump all right let's put some of this stuff away and let's go that way let's see what we can find on that side uh quick stack man my stuff is getting full guys real full deposit all let's see if there's anything i want to keep i got demonite ore in here 
like I said, I'm gonna keep the organization of my chest and whatnot off camera. And this swordfish is really good early at it. If you like using spears in games like this, if you played side scrolling games like this, yeah, that swordfish is really good early on. Why is this good? Yeah, it acts just a lot like the, uh, whatever you call it. I keep pushing tab. That's how you open up the map. But, uh, <clears throat> the swordfish acts like the copper short sword, but the, the difference is it's more of a spear because you can aim it. And it has enough knockback to keep the enemy that you're aiming at at bay so they don't, like, constantly hit you while you're trying to hit them. And it has a longer, way longer reach than the copper short sword. Water leaf. Down there. I've been down there already. As you see, I was down here. It's the underground desert. That's the actual official entrance to it. Nope. Those guys have some serious knockback. Yeah, these guys ain't that dangerous anymore with a sword. These guys are more dangerous, though. I think those ones that's walking around definitely do more damage. But the ones in the ground and those uh, <clears throat> buzzards aren't that bad. See, I, I was talking about this a couple episodes ago because it could be an underground uh, <coughs> voice crack. That could be an underground... um pyramid down there because the shape of this because the sand always falls as you know if you attack it it falls I'm wondering if it fell onto the shape of a pyramid might have to dig in there and see if there is one in there but I doubt it because I don't see much in the ground this is where I died at one point I'm getting some serious voice cracks because I'm not too used to talking. Or commentating, really. That should be mine now, right? Didn't want to fall down here. Oh, just keep getting further down. Let's get on out of here. We'll go in there later. Kind of want to explore. If I can even jump correctly. Like I was talking about, like, first episode, you gotta be real careful with that. That when they added this aesthetic with the half blocks and the angles, sometimes when you step on them just right, you can't jump just like that. I, I pushed space and nothing happened. I just fell. Why is because the game thinks you're in flight or in the air, and you can't double jump, not unless you have the right accessory for it. Uh, what happens is that the game it tricks the game like when you're staying right here in a certain spot on these half blocks that You're technically flying So the game counts that as a jump So therefore you can't jump So like, be wary of that when you play this game that happens a lot Let's go over here and see what we can find in here put some lights down since this game is dark. Yeah, while I was editing editing this last episode, I was like, man, when I was in the cave, I was like, I could see that through the wall. And now I can't. Because when it gets rendered, it gets real dark. Alright, let's get on out here. Because these guys never stop spawning. Day or night. Ooh, like I was on me, like crit, like white on rice. Let's get on out of here. Yeah, those mushrooms I've been picking up, the bile mushrooms, they're used to make uh, the worm bait as well. I think the the bile it's bile mushrooms, rotten meat, which comes from these things, the eaters. Yeah, these mushrooms right here, the bile mushrooms. And they're used to make a uh, powder later on. Oh, there's a surface chest. I can't remember what the powder is used for. I think you can make 
Use the power to corrupt the land. Let's put a light down. See what we got. Ooh, on our radar. That's actually quite rare, guys. This right here is not something that always appears. And I notice if you have trouble finding a particular thing in your world that has a chance of spawning a chest, and it, if you don't get it in your world, you can always make small worlds and use the same character and farm the chests on the surface. And the small worlds, you can just keep making them and deleting them every time you get them for resources. But that raider is actually quite rare. It's not extremely rare. It has a chance of spawning in one of the wooden chests. But I've had worlds where it don't even have them at all. Like there's an accessory called the aglet and the anklet. I've had worlds that don't have aglets or anklets. And you need those to make the boots a uh, special kind of running boots later on. You hear those frogs? You know what that means? We're about to hit the jungle. And this is the jungle. Now this place can be real dangerous. Even more so than the corruption. Yeah, this place is... Oh, look at this hole of water. Wow. Those are the piranhas, by the way. And piranhas have a chance of dropping hooks. Let's get out of this water so I can actually see. I am dark as heck in there. Get off, man. Those guys never stop chasing you. Now, these guys hurt a lot. But they do have a chance of dropping hooks, so that's an early hook if you can brave the jungle. This place is very dangerous. Now, these are the giant plants. These are not the ones that drop the vines. These are snatchers. It's the ones that are underground that drop the vines. They're called man-eaters. Oh, moon glow. But I feel a little bit more brave because I have this sword. That was a really lucky find to get this sword early on like that. That was real lucky. I hope if you guys play this game, I hope your guys are luck is as good as mine when it comes to finding this sword. Or anything else for that matter. Let's go down here and see what could be a chest down here. Yeah, I still got that book equipped. But my accessory count is quite low. Alright, these are bees nests, so don't attack them if you don't want to get a bunch of bees on you. Oh, dude. Yep, oh, I just hit it. Why am I on torches for? It was like, selected on torches for some reason. Even though I wasn't pushing shift. It was just stuck. Alright, oh, yep. That's what I said, the aglet. I got me an aglet. It brings up your running speed a little bit, or your movement speed, which will come in handy. This comes in handy later on when you get the Goblin Tinkerer. And you make like, he has this thing called a workbench or a, a, a tinker bench, which allows you to combine your accessories together to make a more powerful version. Or an accessory that does a whole bunch more stuff than it, the original parts did. It was the Turk uh, Tinker Workbench or the Tinker Station. Let's get out of here. I just wanted the chest. I did get an aglet. I've started this game many times and lately, every time I start a game, for some reason I don't get aglets. Or I'll get aglets but not... That looks like... Okay, I thought that was a strange plant. But not the anklet, you know. And hopefully I get both in this world so I can show you the... What they call the lightning boots. Well, that could catch that frog. I think that's a use for bait. I think frogs are used for bait. Ah, it's just a material, a consumable. Yeah, those grass, grasshoppers ain't worth a lot in bait power, but it's, it's still bait either way. I might have enough stars to go ahead and make another mana star. I gotta keep checking my other screen. That's why it's distracting me. Because like I said, uh, <clears throat> like I said early on, is that Elgato seems to hate Terraria, and it tends to glitch out sometimes. 
Still another frog. I don't need it. If it was a bait, I would take it. But if it, you can catch bugs and in uh, insects, birds, frogs, stuff such as that. <clears throat> and if you had sand to make glass, you can make fish tanks to put all these animals in if you want to do a collection. Never did a collection, though. Because usually if I go for a collection, I go for the golden animals. These herb bags are good. But the, uh, the collection, you can actually build like a bug collection or animal collection. If you want to do so. You can build a whole room with a whole bunch of fish tanks or cages filled with whatever. Might do that. Let's just like have like a few episodes where we just go and catch a bunch of animals, bugs, build like a special house that's just full of almost like a zoo. I don't know if that'll be entertaining enough on the episodes though. I know I definitely have enough stars to make mana stars. One, two. There's ten here. There's total two hundred mana. So after you hit 10 stars here, don't build anymore because you can't use them. Save your stars after that point. And up here it's 20 hearts. Total of 20 hearts, 400. So when you hit 400 health, that's your max for now. Until you hit hard mode and then you get in the jungle. What, what is wrong with this place? I've never seen it spawn like this before. What the... I've never, this is the first time ever, guys. What? Uh... Oh, he dropped a shackle. Alright, this is literally the first time I've ever seen this before. This, there's something wrong with this ocean biome. They spawn underground stuff in the ocean. Because hearts only spawn in the underground. In a certain layer. You, you can't find them on the surface. Until now. I've never seen this happen before. See how the music's happening? I'm on the ocean right now. But I got underground traps. As in this switch and this statue. And heart containers on the surface. Let me find my inventory space. Let's equip this. There we go. Alright, this is a first for me, guys. And a first for you guys, too. If you've never seen this before. Ocean biome that spawned... Really weird. Look at this. I've never seen this before. It means this ocean biome is destroyed. It means this world literally only has one ocean. I can fish at. I can probably fish these. Oh, look at this shark spawned in that tiny little hole of water. But this eliminates a bunch of chests, guys. Just walk into it, man. But in the uh, oceans, or ocean biomes, at the very bottom of the water, where the sand goes down, there's always chests with uh, random loot in them. Like, you can get a trident... That's a goblin. You get a trident. You can get a, what they call a, um, with the flippers, which allows you to swim, which is very good. But this ocean pile is destroyed. It's completely and utterly destroyed. The music's still here, so it's still counting as an ocean biome. But all the chests and stuff are gone. Everything's just gone. I don't like throwing away mud because I actually use mud later on to make my own jungle biome and uh, the mushroom biome. The glowing blue mushroom biome. I'm going to try to pick up this potion. My inventory is just awful right now. So let's go here. Let's put down two of these. Uh, give me this uh, quick stack get rid of some of the stuff 
because man that was a lot of stuff well this is a first for me guys and uh, probably a first for you too to see an entire ocean biome destroyed because the ocean biome starts here but look it's just it's destroyed maybe there's chests down here for the ocean biome actually there could be just buried underground but this is a weird spawn I've never seen this before I know I've said that several times but I'm just flabbergasted right now about seeing this because I've been playing this game for years I've never seen this kind of world gen this world gen is weird all right well we know that that's messed up let's head back home well hmm we know where the jungle is ocean bomb that is completely utterly destroyed is that a chest no wooden chest will be a brown block just like that well we know we have at least one ocean bomb and there is, when you go down here, you'll go at a slope and it'll start flattening out right here. And when you're down here, there'll be a chance of having like one to four chests that'll spawn down here. And they're water chests. They're special. And they will have a trident, which is a, like a spear type weapon, which is okay. It's not the best, but the swordfish is better, I would think. Uh, you can get the flippers and a breathing reed. The breathing reed is probably the worst item to get, in my opinion. So if you get the breathing reed, I'm sorry. If you get the flippers, hooray, that's awesome. Alright, let's go ahead and use. That's where I gotta stop. See, 180, when you hit 200 health, that'll cause the game to summon Cthulhu without you summoning it. And the, the goblin evasion. So when you hit 180, stop and save up all your hearts until you're ready to fight bosses and stuff. Uh, I'll try to keep all my bait in one area. These are pretty good. Well, 15s are alright. I won't put all my bait in here. Oh, slimes. Well, don't look like the end of the episode, guys. I was going to end it right there. But we got the slime rain. This right here has a chance to summon a boss, which I'll probably not beat. I'm not powerful enough to beat him yet. This is the only boss that's the exception to the 200 health rule. Well, other bosses don't summon themselves except for Cthulhu. But this boss right here will summon after you kill so many slimes from the slime ring. And I'll probably die on this boss, to be honest with you guys. I'm not ready for it. But this is a random event that happens once in a while. And if you kill 50 slimes or 100 slimes, I can't remember what it was. It's a certain number. Then I'll summon the Slime King boss. And I'll show you the Slime King even though I probably won't win that fight. Not unless I go in here and I get some Iron Skin Potions. Where's my Iron Skin Potions? I know I got some somewhere. Dang it, where are they? Oh, I think I know where they are. If I can get out of this hole. Yeah, they've got, got to be in here. Yep, I got some swiftness potions. And some iron skin. Man, you guys just leaving the store door open? Alright, when you want to use your buffs, your buff potions, and the traveling merchant. Dude, what do you got for me? Oh, he's got the life form analyzer, that's worth it. And DPS meter, worth it. Ammo box, worth it. Yes. Alright. Yeah, that's like, he'll, he'll, that guy right there will randomly show up. And he could have, oh, Pinky. This is a special enemy that spawns it randomly. And he drops gold. Varying amounts of gold. 
but yeah pinky's worth it if you see him he's he's got a lot of health so just keep that in mind when you see him but if you want early gold you wait for pinky to pop up well, I'm gonna try to fight this boss and uh, if you have buff potions like the uh, swiftness potion iron skin potion any of those kind of potions if you want to use all of them at once what's in your inventory you will use one of these and one of these at once I don't need this though but how to use that is if you push the B key on uh, your keyboard if you're playing this on PC push the B key and it'll automatically use your buff potions okay, deposit all no I can't even do that deposit all all right, let's keep this let's keep this I don't need the other thing I do need these though I didn't want to get rid of them and pinky drops pink slime as well I had other iron skin potions that's why it quick stacked it there they are I didn't want to have the builder potion because they'll use that as a buff as well so so make sure when you before you go into a boss fight or you want to use buff potions and use the B key, make sure you don't have potions you don't want to use. Because they'll use all buff potions that's in your inventory. Not all of them in a stack, but like that mining potion I just picked up. It's going to use that and I don't want to use that. Man, can I not stay up there? Let's put this out on. Uh, I used it. Hit the wrong key. Just keep getting hit by all these slimes. Is that another iron skin potion? Nice. I doubt I'll be able to kill King Slime when he spawns. Well, at least I'll show you the boss. Turn around, dude. You won't turn around. Alright, kill him. Get rid of that slime. That's a good way to get a bunch of slime. Which is actually useful for making torches and flamethrower fuel later on. And sticky bombs. Which comes in handy for breaking into the uh, corruption or crimson I don't know if I'll be able to take out King Slime we'll see because my spawn points here I have a feeling I might lose some NPCs for this Hunter slime. Wow. I can't remember how many slimes it is to get. Oh, another pinky. Oh, you come back. Oh, 40 silver. No gold coins on that pinky. It's a good flat area to do a fight, though. Not talking very much because I'm concentrating on all the slimes. There's too many slimes. But I'm letting this episode go longer only because of this event happening. Oh, there's King Slime. Let's use B key. Now I got Iron Skin. That gives me more defense. Keep hitting the wrong things. Hey, yep. Jeez, man. Get rid of the thousands and thousands of slimes. This guy never stops spawning slimes. I'm about to die.
potion cooldown. Yep. Death. Death. Yep. And most of the time the bosses will disappear. Because your respawn time is like four years. I don't know why it takes so long. Oh, let's get this pinky real quick. Make us pinky. And then we'll probably have to end the episode there. Next time, man. Next time, we're taking out King Slime. He's not really that difficult. He's probably one of the easier bosses in the game. It's just, I don't have the right armor and stuff for him yet, so. Alright guys, that will be the end of this episode. If you uh, like to support this channel, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to become part of the Meerkat family, while all these slimes are raining down on me, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget about that notification bell to keep up with my latest videos. And I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.